Owlboy was a breakout indie game on PC back in 2016, and now this lovable klutz flies its way over to consoles with Owlboy for the Nintendo Switch, PS4, and Xbox One. Owlboy is a heartwarming story about a lovable group of misfits just trying to do their best. It's a modern take on a retro metroidvania game with a lot of heart and a lot of charm. Owlboy stars a humanoid owl named Otis who's filled with a lot of flaws and weaknesses. The game takes those drawbacks in his character and weaves together to form a beautiful story. Otis is trying his best, but sometimes your best just isn't enough, and it's okay to ask for help. Otis is an owl boy in training, but he's kind of a klutz, always messing up something his elders are asking him to do. At the end of the day, he's just trying to earn the respect of everyone around him. The opportunity shows up when sky pirates invade his village, and now he's left with the task of saving the day. This won't be an easy task though. After all, all Otis can do is fly and spin. He's going to need some help. Owlboy's story is an uplifting feel-good story of a group of friends all bringing together a unique skill to the table to ultimately save the day. Despite Otis being a mute character, I never had trouble feeling what he was going through, both good and bad. The 10 hour journey sent me through both and I couldn't be more happy to experience it. Owlboy follows the trend of a lot of indie games recently playing as a metroidvania game which at this point feels like I'm reviewing one every single week on this channel. Regardless, Owlboy shines among the rest because it's actually giving context to the gameplay genre. You see, Otis himself is just an owl that can fly, dodge roll, and spin. That's about it. Sure he can complete a task or two, but ultimately he's going to need some help, and that's where his friends and the metroidvania aspects of the gameplay come into play. As you progress through the story, friends and partners will join you, adding in a new ability to your skill arsenal. Getty, for example, has a quick fire pistol that can shoot a short distance around Otis. When the two work together, the pair can fly around freely, shooting any enemy around them, almost feeling like a twin stick shooter. Controls are, for the most part, pretty easy to navigate. You move around Otis with the touch of the left analog stick, while the right controls the aiming reticle. The shoulder buttons teleport your allies to you, while also acting as a switcher if you already have an ally with you. This is all done via a teleporter that you earn pretty early on in the game. The left trigger is used to pick up your ally, while the right activates their unique skill, like Getty's pistol for example. The rest is pretty simple. Press A to jump, and the longer you hold down the button, the higher the jump. Lastly, there's a face button dedicated to the dodge roll, and another to the spin attack. The only issue I have with the controls is that to fly, all you have to do is press the A button twice, or just press up while you're jumping. My issue with this is that it's very easy to accidentally start flying when you're trying to jump to a specific platform in a small room sequence, like the first boss. Those were pretty much the only times I felt that the game was more frustrating than challenging. Much like any other metroidvania game, you'll explore moderately sized open worlds filled with enemies, places to explore, and secrets to discover. Collecting the currency found in treasure chests can be used to upgrade or buy cosmetic items for Otis to wear on his journey. Some of them will provide upgrades and some of them just won't do anything, they just look cool. Enemies come in different shapes and sizes, each with their own quirks and methods on how to take them down. While some enemies can just be blessed with a pistol, others you'll need to spin and reflect their own attack against them. This will cause a mini game of ping pong before the enemy finally gets tired and gives in. I love little sequences like this that were unique to each enemy. It not only made the combat more interesting, but the overall game more charming. The big highlight enemies are of course the boss fights that tend to come at the end of a section off exploration area. Each one puts you in a unique situation that's unlike previous fights with smaller enemies or a previous boss fight. They can get quite adrenaline fueling, especially that first boss. As for the exploration, you'll come across different terrains, each with their own stunning visuals on display. As you add new friends to your group, you'll be able to unlock new areas to explore thanks to their unique skills. A lot of the exploration will have you deal with puzzles and the occasional group of enemies. The puzzles were pretty fun, they didn't feel too challenging, but rather just clever. For example, one puzzle has you use Otis's flying to carry a cloud around to fill up the caverns with rainwater and retrieve whatever sunk inside them. In another instance, you'll need to use a friend's musket to break through the cave walls. The different aspects and characteristics of the characters in the story seamlessly weave together with the gameplay to match the genre. These friends are basically your classic metroidvania ability unlocks, but they feel essential to the story rather than just the gameplay, because the story itself is so in touch with the theme of failure and weaknesses. Nothing felt forced, but rather well integrated. No one single character felt like it was forced into the story just so it could fit part of the gameplay genre, but rather the opposite. The story fit together, and then the gameplay just happened to work into it. Owlboy does an absurdly good job at creating a beautiful canvas artwork throughout the whole game. The pixel art here is just filled with an insane amount of details that's just pretty rare to see in games now. 
clouds and pirate ships moving throughout the background, animations on TV screens, and the flowing water dripping down the cave caverns. There's even a day cycle that filters in different intensities of light, thus you get a retro looking pixel game with an actual day and night cycle that doesn't just change the sky tone from blue to black. You get shades of purple, orange, actual sunsets, and it all looks amazing. The animation for characters and fast motion attacks looks smooth and fluid. It truly does look like the living definition of a modernized retro metroidvania game. Characters tend to speak in speech bubbles, but our main boy, Otis, is a mute. He can't speak, but regardless, is able to show and express his dismay and enthusiasm through the different expressions on his face. It can be quite adorable and saddening depending on the situation. If you're playing this on the Nintendo Switch, the lovely visuals translate pretty well onto the smaller display, making them look extra crisp and sharp. The game ran at a mostly solid 1080p60 on consoles and in dock mode for the Switch, though on the Switch in particular, there were two instances where I noticed some slowdown in my 10 hour playthrough. It wasn't anything too substantial though, not enough for me to say it's not playable on the Switch. Regardless, whether you pick this up on PS4 or Xbox One or Switch, you'll have a pretty good playthrough. Owlboy somehow manages to keep its music tracks at the same caliber as the visuals and the story already on it. There are lovely orchestrated pieces that are woven together well into the stunning visuals on display along with the touching story. Occasionally you'll hear a bit of bumping chiptune in the mix, and I think it plays well with the quirky personalities of the characters you're playing as. Jonathan Gear did a fantastic job scoring the music for this game, with some of my favorites being the whimsical flying lessons track and the gentle sounding main theme. Owl Boy is a magical and delightful modern take on classic Metroidvania games. It's filled with charm and personality that pumps through every vein of this game's core. From its stunning looking pixel art to the heavy emotion inducing orchestra pieces, Owl Boy is a work of art. It can be a bit tough during sequences that can seem near impossible when you first attempt them, but after some good trial and error, I got my way through them and felt more satisfied in the process. The only time those challenges felt a bit unfair was when I messed up because of the at times easy to accidentally activate flying controls. Other than that, I enjoyed my time playing through Owlboy on consoles just as much as I did back in 2016 on PC. I'm very excited for a new group of players to finally get a chance to try out this game. It was definitely worth the wait. That does it for my review of Owlboy for the Nintendo Switch, PS4, and Xbox One, and of course it's already been out on PC, so if you haven't tried it out, definitely go give it a shot on PC if you want to play it on that platform. But if you do have any questions about the game or the review that I may have missed, feel free to ask me in the comment section down below, or feel free to hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, or Discord. Those links are in the description down below. If you enjoyed this review, then let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe for more content and reviews just like this. As always, thank you all very much for watching, hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next one.